welcome back to my channel today's episode is going to be actually hopefully pretty good we're just going to start and talk about a few things here we're going to talk about what it takes to refurbish a clarinet that's with new pads new corks oiling the body regilding the emblems and hopefully everything top to bottom some things you may not be able to do completely other things you can I'm going to try to do this in a way that everyone can do it at home using hopefully simple tools. Well, when it gets to the pads and the adhesive, that may not be so simple. Um, and later on, we'll, as we talk about each section, we'll look at put, uh, potential places to buy things. We don't want to buy stuff off of eBay really much because that's really cheap. Uh, some things may not work well. Pad quality means a lot on the way of playability and also installation. The cheaper the pads, you can expect them not to work very well. So there's a lot of things that we do want to cover. And we'll be using simple things. For instance, we'll talk about when it comes to corks, whether it's on the key arms or not, we can use sometimes you know, Teflon, other type of fabrics, artificial corks, stuff like that on the keys and everything there's a wide variety of brought cup out here you know we got different thicknesses wide variety and thicknesses and everything we have to learn how to cut them properly mark and cut them you know using simple things as a straight edge a real straight edge and a cheap one so that we cut things straight learning how to properly glue it what type of adhesive to glue like for instance tenon corks on or key corks on a lot of things to learn there <clears throat> course we then get to pads pad selection where to purchase pads and things like that these are leather pads that could be used <laughs> we have cork pads which are used in some instances on trill keys and register keys and clarinets and we have uh, skin pads, as they're called, fish skin pads. Also artificial pads and everything like that. But we don't want to go full bore in and use really expensive Gore-Tex pads because truthfully, if you've never done this before and this is your first time, you will probably not do it properly. You'll probably have to do it again. So taking one's time, listening and learning, not just jumping in and doing it. For instance, Here's a clarinet right here. It has an emblem on it. We're going to learn how to gild that emblem. We have to do it in a specific order. One thing we first do is we check the emblem to make sure it has a deep enough cut to accept gilding cream, gilding crayon, a variety of things that could be used in it. So we got to learn how to cut it properly, which takes skill and time. Take your time doing it. Next, how do you gild it? Because we have to also oil the body we want to make sure we don't oil the body first because if we oil the body we're going to end up filling in the emblem with oil and guess will what will not stick to oil your gilding cream or crayon or anything you make it look good but it's going to fall out real quickly so first thing you do is you cut the emblem then you use a form of wax actually and you polish up and around the emblem with the wax then you cut the emblem out again with e even using just needle pins. Make sure there's no wax in the emblem itself. And then you put the cream on or crayon on or whatever. And you're able to rub it in into the emblem itself where it gets direct contact to the wood. Then you put it under, for instance, I always use a little heat lamp, which helps melt everything in there. Then it cools. Now, the good thing is, since there's a wax layer around it, cleaning it up is really easy. If you don't put wax on the body, when you get to clean it up, you'll have gilding cream or crayon, whatever, all in the grain of the wood up and around the emblem. So there's very specific things you do when you go refurbishing a clarinet to make it look its best. Of course, when it comes to polishing cream... I've always used 
what's called goat cream. This is from um, the Buron. It's expensive stuff, really. I got silver for some that may like silver. And a couple of different colors of gold. Uh, it just has a color in the chantilly. This one is called um, goat cream Versailles. And this stuff really isn't very cheap. So, and there's also golden crayons that can be used. We'll review that later on when we get to it. When it comes to polishing the keys, we're going to do it in a way we can do it at home. One way is using simple metal polish. You go to clarinetperfection.com. I actually have a page about this and using this. It's a little bit more complex, though. Polishing the rings is one thing. But when you get to polishing the posts, that's completely different. Polishing the keys won't be too much of an issue because we're going to have the keys off of the clarinet. If you go to the webpage, clarinetperfection.com, you'll see I'm polishing the keys on the clarinet. We have to be really careful. But the trick here is that you want to oil the body first, and then you polish the posts. Because the polish, once again, will get into the grain of the wood unless it's oiled. If it's oiled, they come right off. So you polish the posts and everything. You polish the bell after you oil it. And it'll come out a lot more cleaner. So certain steps like that we got to learn to do. Of course, we oil it. This is almond oil, sweet almond oil you just get from Trader Joe's or Kroger or something. You can get that there. Also, with older clarinets with the tone holes, tone holes can leak around the tone hole. One way to deal with that is you seal the tone hole. I've always done that with, once again, basically this is special pale French polish, the beer on once again. Um, all this stuff I have is imported at one time. So there's a lot of steps here to refurbish a clarinet we can learn to do in-house. Of course, we'll need screwdrivers. You can get away with simple screwdriver sets like this. These aren't very expensive. We'll be using the flat ones. You may break a tip or two on these. I will be using professional level screwdrivers. I believe I got these either from um, Allied or maybe Bray Tools or JL Smith. I can't remember off the top of my head. But we'll review these things. Some things as a non-professional you can't get like jl smith will only sell to uh technicians specific technicians but um we'll learn about those things and there's some things that i'll be doing that you may not be able to do at home for instance you're taking out the thumb hole ring and the register register um tube which i have specific tools for that for popping out the register tube which you probably won't have at home but then we'll seal those and you gotta seal them using things such as beeswax or even simple candle wax but non-perfumed candle wax is preferred and so there's a variety of things to do there but you'll need things also these are easy to get home right use these for polishing the corks and everything this is a specific tool but one of the most important things you'll learn you need is getting a block of wood. And I'll be providing a template here, paper template you print out, you can glue to that wood and then drill holes in it to hold each, each of the rods for each of the keys so we don't lose those and they don't get out of order because they're all slightly different lengths and you don't want to mess them up even if you think they look the same. Just really don't want to mess them up because they've worn in those keys. So we'll begin that in the next episode. We're going to start actually with the barrel and the bell. We're going to start really simple. Barrel and the bell in the next episode. So tune in, subscribe, like, share with your friends, and we'll see you next time as we start doing refurbishing of clarinets. We'll go over everything that you need then. See you later.